Changing your pickups is surprisingly easy, and once you get the hang of it, it doesn't take much longer than changing your strings. There's no absolute best method, but here I'll show you one technique that's especially fast and easy. Let me show you some of the tools you'll need. First of all, a soldering iron, whether it's this fancy kind with adjustable temperature, or just your basic pencil type iron. But in any case, don't use one of those big gun type irons because that's too much power for fine electronic work. You'll need a tool to clip wire and one to strip wire. You'll need small screwdrivers, both regular and Phillips head. An electric screwdriver is great if you have one, but if not, the old fashioned kind will get the job done. You'll need a small pliers to grab hot wires or work them through tight places and a little bit of electrical tape. It's also a good idea to have on hand a roll of painter's tape, which is like masking tape, but less sticky. And your cell phone so you can make a record of your work as you proceed. And finally, some bath towels to protect your work area and your guitar. Now, soldering can be dangerous, and you shouldn't proceed unless you're comfortable with the tools. You can find some really good soldering tutorials online. Just go to YouTube and type in how to solder electronics. We'll also review a couple of basics as we proceed. A good starting point is to download a wiring diagram appropriate for your guitar and your pickups. Just go to SeymourDuncan.com, click on Support, and then Wiring Diagrams. In this demo, I'll be replacing the bridge pickup in a dual humbucker guitar with two volume controls, one tone control, and a three-way switch. So I'll choose that option. But you know, a lot of times you can do the job without a wiring diagram, especially if you're just swapping pickups without altering the electronics or doing any fancy wiring tricks like phase switching or coil tapping. Here we just want to exchange one pickup for another, so we'll be opening up the guitar, seeing where the old pickup connects, disconnecting it, installing the new pickup, and making the same connections with the new wires. It should go pretty fast. Now before we start soldering, a few words about the two type of pickup connections you're likely to encounter. Vintage pickups and vintage style pickups use what's called single connector wire. This type of wire has a meshy outer coating that gets connected to ground, usually by being soldered to the back of one of the pots. There's also an inner wire, usually inside a layer of black insulation, that carries the hot connection. And it usually connects to one of the lugs of your volume pots. The pickup we're removing is this type. By the way, they call it hot just because it carries the signal from the pickups, but it doesn't get physically hot unless you heat it with the soldering iron, and it will never shock you, so don't worry about that. The other type of wire is called four connector, and it's more common in modern pickups. It's not necessarily any harder to work with, it's just different. It looks like a single black wire, but when you strip it back, you see that it actually contains five wires inside black, white, red, and green, and a bare, unshielded one. There's also this foil wrap that you don't use. You can just snip that away. The pickup we'll be installing has this type of connections. The extra wires, by the way, are for doing things like coil taps and phase switching, which we won't be doing in this tutorial. We'll just be connecting it the same way the single connector pickup was connected. Now, one important thing. These color codes are not universal. In this demo, we'll be working with Seymour Duncan pickups and their unique color codes. If you're using this lesson to install pickups from another manufacturer, it'll still be either single connector or four connector, but the color code may be different, so definitely check the manufacturer's website for the codes before you proceed. Now, assuming you are working with a Seymour Duncan pickup, the color codes work like this. The black wire carries the hot signal from your pickups, and it'll get connected to one of the pot lugs. The green and bare wires are the ground signal, and they're going to get soldered to the back of one of the pots. And the red and white wires are used for advanced wiring like phase switching and coil tapping, and we won't be using them. We'll be braiding them together and taping them off. Now while we're on the subject, let's go ahead and prep the wires for the pickup we're going to be installing. I'm stripping away the outer shielding with my wire stripper, and I can see that there's five different wires in there. Four of them are shielded. And I'm going to use the wire stripper to strip away the shielding from those four. The red one. Black one. White one. And the green one. Now I'm going to braid together the white and red wires. and I'm going to solder them together. Just as a reminder, when you're soldering, you generally don't touch the solder directly to the iron. 
you use the iron to heat the area to be soldered and then touch the solder to the surface once it's hot enough. Okay, I've got the white and red connected. Now I'm going to braid together the green and bare wires and solder them together the same way. Heat it up for a second. Touch the solder to the hot wire. There we go. And even though I'm not yet connecting the black wire to anything, I'm also going to apply a thin coat of solder to that wire. That process is called tinning, and that thin coat of solder makes the wire easier to work with and more likely to adhere to whatever surface we're trying to attach it to. Finally, I'm going to get a little strip of black electrical tape and seal off the red and white wires, which we won't be using. And there's our two working connections, the green ground wire and the black hot wire. I've already placed a bath towel over my work surface. I've taken a second towel and wrapped it up like a pillow, and that's going to make a neck rest for my guitar. It's going to give me a nice, stable working surface. Okay, we're going to have to remove the strings. If you want to use this opportunity to change your strings, just snip them off with the wire clipper. If you want to reuse your strings, work them free from the tuning posts. If you have a Les Paul type guitar, be prepared for the fact that the bridge and the tailpiece may be attached by nothing more than the pressure of the strings. So grab them and put them somewhere safe so they don't scratch your guitar. Turn your guitar over and use your screwdriver to remove the control cavity cover. Keep on hand a little dish to stow all the little parts or just use the little plastic box your pickups came in. There are six screws on the pickup mounting ring. For now, let's remove the four Phillips head screws in the corner. These are the ones that secure the mounting ring to the body. Gently work it loose from the body and then turn the guitar over so you can look into the control cavity. If you haven't already done so, now is a great time to snap a picture of the before electronics. Now gently tug the pickup to identify its wire. Okay, now I can see that the hot wire is connected to one of the lugs of this middle volume pot, the bridge volume pot, and its outer mesh is soldered to the back of the pot. I'll unsolder the hot connection by touching the soldering iron to the lug. Here I'm able to work it free just using the tip of the iron, but in general it's a good idea to grip the wire with a little plier so you don't burn yourself. It might take a little longer to melt the solder on the back of the pot, especially if you don't have a fancy soldering iron with adjustable temperature. Just be patient. You may have to hold the iron there for 30 seconds or so before it comes loose. Now the pickup's ready to remove, but before we take it out, let's make a note of its orientation. Humbucker pickups are usually oriented screws out. Neck pickup screws face the neck. Bridge pickup screws face the bridge. Also note that the mounting ring isn't symmetrical. It's fatter on one side. I'm going to use a little strip of painter's tape to mark the bridge facing side of the pickup so I don't get mixed up later. This is also probably a good time for another cell phone picture. New pickups generally come with screws and springs, but not new mounting rings. So in most cases, you'll want to remove the pickup from the old mounting ring and replace it with the new one. Check out the assembly. Here's the pickup with its brackets. There's the plastic mounting ring and two long screws inside springs. Now this can be one of the trickier parts of changing pickups, especially the first time. Namely, removing the springs and screws without having the springs go flying across the room. Cup the whole assembly in your hand and work the remaining two screws loose with a regular head screwdriver. Now, use your fingertips to compress the spring, exposing the bare end of the screw. Position the new pickup's bracket over the screw and hold it in place. And then screw it in. The exact amount you screw it in doesn't really matter. We'll be adjusting it later. Just enough to hold everything together for now. Now this sort of pickup with no cover displays both the slugs and the screws. But like we said before, the screws will face towards the bridge. So make sure that the screws are oriented towards the bridge side of the pickup mounting ring. Now install the screw on the other side of the bracket. And we're ready to load the pickup. Work the wires through the hole that leads to the control cavity.
and position the pickup, triple checking the orientation of the screws. Turn it over, pull the wire through. Now you can screw the new pickup in using either the screws you saved or the new ones that came with your pickup. Now we're going to work the tinned tip of that black wire through the lug of the volume pot. Heat the lug with the tip of the soldering iron. Thread the black wire through it, making sure it's not touching any other connections. Let it set for a second. And now all we have to do is connect the ground wire to the back of the pot. Again, be patient here. It may take a while to get it up to adequate heat. Now, as you can tell from looking at this guitar, I've done a lot of pickup changes in here and it's kind of a mess, but I've got this little blob of solder left from my previous installs and I'm just gonna melt that till it's a nice runny pool and then put the wire in. Now, I suggest you don't follow my dumbass example here and use the pliers to hold the wire instead of your bare fingers. There, it looks nice and runny. Press it into place. Let it set for a sec. And there, it looks good. We're all set. If I wanted to be a little bit neater, I could have trimmed this wire shorter. Sometimes I leave a little bit of extra wire because I might want to reuse the pickup on another guitar where it needs a little bit more wire run. Uh, you can always just tie everything off with a little cable tie to keep it neat. Having a few extra inches in the wire has no sonic consequences whatsoever. And just to be super clear, here's an annotated picture of what we just did. Black wire to the lug, ground wire to the back of the pot, red and white taped off. And now it's time to check the connection. I'm going to plug in the guitar. Make sure I've got the proper pickup selected. I'm going to very lightly tap the pull pieces with the screwdriver and verify that I'm getting sound out of them. While I'm at it, I'm going to lower the bridge volume pot, make sure it's working correctly. There we go. That's what we want to hear. If everything's working as expected, restring and adjust the pickup height. Here's one good technique. Press your string down at the highest fret and raise the pole pieces till they almost but don't quite touch the string. That'll give you a good starting point, and from there you can adjust the taste. Do the same on the treble side. Now, if you don't hear a sound when you tack the pickup, you need to recheck the connection of that hot black wire. If you do hear a sound, but with more buzzing than you're used to, then you probably have a problem with your ground wire connection. Now, if you're stuck at this point, remember, help is waiting. During West Coast business hours, you can call Seymour Duncan Tech Support. The product experts are smart, patient, cool, and eager to help you. You can also get info 24-7 on the Seymour Duncan Users Forum. Just go to SeymourDuncan.com and click Forum. Don't be shy about asking beginners questions. Everybody here was a beginner at some point, and they're very eager to help. Well, I hope you found these instructions helpful, and I hope you enjoy your new pickup.